<laughs> All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And I know how hard it is to wake up this morning because we just had a daylight savings. And our time moved forward. And I know how important sleep is to all of us. I see some of you still have that red eyes. Right? But then again, nothing is more important as being here together, worshiping and praising the Lord together and having fellowship with one another. Amen? Amen. So, since it's our second week and of our new series, Let's Glow, and before we start our message, we have a memory verse. Yeah, it's in Matthew 5, verse 16. All right, so, oh wait, they showed it now. Anyways, here it is. Um, let, your, let your light so shine before men, so others that, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So that is our memory verse. All right, so now in relation to last week's message, right, we learned that one function of salt is to add flavor. And as Christians, we bring that flavor to others by being a blessing in their lives. So in today's message, we will learn another function of salt. And that is preservation. Therefore, the title of the message for today is Preservatives Added. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to come to you humbly, Father God. And I pray for your word, Lord God, that it would speak through us, Lord God. It would convict our hearts, Lord. And Lord, may we invite, Lord, the Holy Spirit to be in this place, Father God. And once again, Lord, everything, Lord God, that um, will, do we do, Lord God, we just want to lift it up to you, Lord God. And all the praise, Lord God, belongs to you, Lord God, and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now if you look, if we're going to look at salt, right, it might look like it's just a simple ingredient where we used to mix it. In our food, as Coach Yves stated last week, that salt brings flavor. So whenever the food tastes bland, well, what do we do? We can add more salt so we can eat more. All right? So after we eat more, then we go to our doctor. Then we, we have a checkup. And then they're going to find out you have a high sodium. But then, then now, that's what, I, mean, I, did, I mean, when I went to the doctor, well, they didn't find I have a high sodium. But they found out I have a high cholesterol. <laughs> now, every time I look at food, oh, there's cholesterol. I cannot eat this. But every time I want to eat it, my wife will be like, no, you have a high cholesterol. Don't eat that. So I believe the lesson in this story is do not go to your doctor. <laughs> but look at um, Coach Ives. That's the reason why he doesn't go to the doctor, right? <laughs> but anyways, kidding aside, you know, if we are going to look at the salt, right? Salt huge, plays a huge role during the ancient times, before the advancement in our technology, before our refrigerator was invented for preservation of food. The use of salt was highly valued because that is their key ingredient to preserve food and protect it from decaying. Throughout history, we can see the importance of salt and it was solidified, especially when people sailed during expeditions. Now, in reference to salt, Jesus Christ used it as a simple analogy, stating in Matthew 5, verse 13, and it says there, You are the salt of the earth. Where he is telling us that those of us who claim that we are Christians or believers in Christ, just as the function of salt, that we have a huge responsibility in preserving and protecting our world from decaying. We already know the fact that we are living in a sinful world where negativity and animosity tends to dominate. Therefore, as followers of Christ, He is calling us believers to make an impact in the world by creating positive influence on others and we bring out the best in them. And in turn, 
we preserve the good that is still left in this world. That is one of the roles that Christ has commanded us to do. So to be a preservative in our world, these are the crucial actions that we need to do. So our very first point for today is stop conforming. It says there in Romans 2, verse 2, and do not be conformed to this world. Here, Apostle Paul is telling us believers in Christ to not conform to this world. Which means that we have to stop living our lives according to the world's values and standards. Now, the worldly values and standards that Apostle Paul is trying to warn us about, which we should be aware of and not follow, are the cultural norms or traditions the world has created that can easily influence us. Since by default, we are, our very nature is sinful, then these such norms or traditions were also created out of the sinfulness of men. And it says there in Colossians 2 verse 8, Beware, lest, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit. According to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. The implication of this verse is describing the false teachers in Colossae. But if we are going to refer to this verse to see what is happening in our present day right now, it is still true that there are still many out there who spread false teachings or beliefs and ideologies that are very attractive when we hear it. Then it appeals to us because these ungodly teachings are very easy to do and we find ourselves benefiting from it. You know, especially for us Filipinos, you know, we have a lot of superstitions. Yeah. I don't know if you heard about this. I mean, in my, fa in my family, you know. Um, put this in front of your door. Probably put it in the east, north, or west, or whatever. Right? And blessings will come into your house. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, another one is like, you know, light up a candle in that statue. And you will live a prosperous life. So sometimes, you know, I mean, for those of you who know me, sometimes I have these crazy ideas in my mind. So sometimes I just talk to my wife. So what will happen if I blow the handle out? <laughs> so he keeps me in check. All right. Sometimes I have these crazy ideas in my mind. So yeah, she always keeps me in check. And sometimes, and there are some, I've also heard that, you know, you do not need to go to church. Just donate your money and heaven will open its door for you. Oh, like something like magical like that. <laughs> and I was like, wow, is that true? Probably I could do that as well. But again, if we are looking at it, that is created, that, that is false, right? That is created by man's tradition, which is not according to the principles of God, all right? I was going to say just donate it to Lightcast United, you know, but anyways. <laughs> but anyways, so whether we want to admit it or not, right, I believe that all of us here are natural consumers. Where we always choose what it is easy, what's easy and beneficial for us, even to the point of believing in that principle of the world without even realizing that what we are doing is against the principles of God. Instead of becoming salt to the earth as Christians, because since salt preserves, we now become sugar, always trying to sweeten up our walk with God. Instead of working to preserve ourselves and preserve our walk with Him while we are still here on this earth. May we always be reminded that even though we are in this earth, we are not of it because we are already in Christ. As it says in John 17 verse 16, this is Jesus Christ talking. 
He said, they are not of the world. His disciples, his followers, just as I am not of the world. And also church, do you know what I also notice? You know, is that most of us, not all of us, okay? Most of us are also natural conformists. What do I mean by that? Do you, do you notice that? Or what do I mean by we are also natural conformists? You know, I believe that we have this tendency to conform. Because if we are being honest to ourselves, right, we are always looking for a sense of belonging. We look for that. We want to belong, right? Therefore, there is always that temptation for us to go along with the crowd. Especially once we leave this place, you know, once we leave a church, because we want to fit in out there to the world. We want to belong to the world. And sometimes we just, want, we just don't want to go against popular opinions or face opposition by ourselves. So we just go with the flow. We just go with the flow. But the Lord God commanded us in Exodus 23 verse 2. And it says there, you shall not follow a crowd to do evil. Nor shall you testify in a dispute so as to turn aside after many to pervert justice church we have to remember that if we are claiming to be christians that we already belong with christ therefore there's no need for us to follow the crowd for its worldly ways because our identity is now secure in christ right we also need to avoid this type of worldly influence and we could see that, some of samples that in Galatians 5, verse 19 to 21. And it says there, now the works of the flesh are evident, which, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, self ambitions, dissensions, heresies, and moving on to 21, it says there, envy, murders, and drunkenness. And I believe this is man's favorite pastime, drunkenness, because every time I go out in the city and I walk, there's always happy hour and all of that, right? So I call this man's favorite pastime, drunkenness, then revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. All of these practices are examples of worldly values and standards. And if we conform to these patterns of the world, then our testimony and being a witness for the Lord is compromise. We are placing ourselves in a very unfavorable and questionable position. Also, we are being contaminated and polluted by these such actions. And going back to our main passage, where it says there in Matthew 5.13, it says there, But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. This verse is telling us that as we compromise with the world or embrace its ways, we risk losing our uniqueness and valuable qualities as Christians. Much like salt that has lost its flavor. We lose our distinctive qualities and rather than being like the, like the salt that preserves and adds flavor to decaying food, we become like decaying food itself. And not only, not only do we harm other individuals, 
but it also undermines our ability to possibly make an impact around our society, which goes against God's intended purpose for all of us. And, you know, I remember before I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior, you know, I, I, I'm actually very prejudiced and I'm biased against Christians. Yeah. I'm, I'm biased against them. You know, the reason for that being is that, you know, many, as I have seen, right, claims to be followers of Christ, but the way I see them, you know, they're just a bunch of hypocrites. You know, they're a bunch of hypocrites because some of them, you know, some of them are, I'm not saying all of them, all right? So some of them or many of them are like very condemning. You know, they're, they're not loving. Uh, what else? They're, they're very arrogant, you know. And sometimes, you know, they would invite you to go to, to Sunday service, you know, and you would see them raising their hands, praising the Lord during a Sunday. And then next thing I know, I'll see them in the bar raising their hands with beer saying cheers. <laughs> you know? I'm like, so me and my friends were like, oh, wait, is he the one who invited us to church? Yeah, so what happened? So I was like, you know, so some of my friends were like, yeah, another one, another hypocrite. So, and of course that has a negative impact to me. So every time I see one, I see a Christian, well, unconsciously, I was like, I want to prove that this one right here is also a hypocrite. I have a bias like that. Right? But then, not to the point that I met this person, yeah, and I met this person. Um, he's not here anymore. He's already in Texas. You know, his name is Zion. All right. So when I met this person, so what? What I did I was like, oh, is this is another hypocrite. <laughs> right. I mean, I already have my bias right before. I, that's already my bias. I mean, I believe that still. Every, if I talk to someone else, they have their own biases. If you'll see, oh, yan ba yung born again? It's like there's like a negative. Thinking already when they say that, right? So probably they, they had an experience with them as well. So to the point that when I met Zion, so what I did is I, I, tried, to, I tried to tempt this guy, <laughs> right? <laughs> Just to prove that he's another hypocrite, right? But then, again, no matter what I do, <laughs> he just doesn't give in. So I'm like, what's up with this? <laughs> what's up with this dude? And he is not very condemning, you know. And sometimes, of course, we have, we have talks. And I'm like, I, I'm, I'm going to tell him what, what we did last week or whatever. Oh, tol. So, you know, we did this and all of this crazy stuff that I cannot, you know, say it here. <laughs> and then he was like, he's just going to smile. He's just going to smile and be like, Ikaw talaga? Puro kakalokohan. So I'm not sure how to translate that in English. Uh, it's hard. Uh, you, so nonsense. Something like that. <laughs> Something like that. I mean, I don't know how to translate that in English. But uh, 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 that's what he says. <laughs> right? But he said it in a, not in a condemning way, but, you know, in a friendly and loving way. But in, but in Tagalog, it makes more sense in English. It doesn't make sense. All right? Then I was like, there is, there is something different about this person. To the point that I got attracted and curious about his lifestyle, you know. And now that I became a Christian, you know, I, I look up to Zion because I believe that he has made a positive impact in my life in order for me to get to know Christ. Therefore, I believe, I believe that a true follower of Christ brings godly influence to the world. And, I, as, and as I continue to grow spiritually in my faith, now I know how Zion was able to live a faithful lifestyle because the one who is working in him is Christ, which will lead us to our second point. Be transformed by Christ. And going back to Romans 12 Verse 2, and it says there, but be transformed 
by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In this verse, the transformation that Paul is telling us can only happen if we have an authentic understanding of the gospel message, which is the salvation of man from our sins through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, the question for all of us that we can reflect on is, do I truly understand the gospel? And do, have I surrendered my life to Christ, accepting Him as my Lord and Savior? Because if the answer is yes, then there should be an inner change that is happening within us. And as we listen and allow the Holy Spirit to work in us, then we are being transformed to be more like Christ. It is only by the power and work of the Holy Spirit that one can be fully transformed. And it also says in this verse, by renewing of your mind. And the only way we can have a renewed mind is first we have to repent of our sins. Because we cannot have a renewed mind if we do not admit that we have committed wrong against God, against Christ. Then as we repent and humble ourselves before the Lord, our minds are now being renewed. And He will teach us the errors of the world's way of thinking and replace it with His truth. As Christ continues to increase in our lives and our old selves continues to decrease, then the manifestation of our inner self would be then displayed externally. Being transformed to Christ-likeness is not a one-day process. You know, as you can see, if you're going to look to your left and right, no one here is perfect. Like, you're arrogant today, then once you have received Christ today, then tomorrow you won't be arrogant. It doesn't happen. Look at our, oh, pastor's not here. <laughs> All right? So, I mean, look, if you're not, right? It's an ongoing process as we continue to live our everyday lives. And it says in Philippians 12, verse 12, Philippians 2, verse 12, it says there, Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And as we work out on our salvation, which is to practice and demonstrate our faith, we also have to constantly listen and be sensitive to the Holy Spirit who will transform the way we think, believe, act, and feel according to what is good in the sight of God. And this kind of transformation can only take place through consistent study and meditation on God's word which can be found in the scriptures. And it says there in Joshua 1 verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Now, you know, I must look at this verse when it says meditate and night and literally, why did it say day and night. So typically, when we wake up in the morning, right, what do we usually do? Well, we, we take a shower, we, we eat, we prepare our food, then we check our phones. Okay? So not, now, for the many of us, what is, um, this is our usual way of thinking. All right? When we wake up in the morning, we already have a negative mindset. Ah, oh, why do I have to go to work? Right. Why do I have to go to school? Something like that. Why do I have to go to church? The whole time is so early. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, when we check the news first thing in the morning, we'll, we're going to see the news. You know, we're going to see the news. Then there's killing here. You don't take the subway and all of that. And all this negativity right, can cause us to be depressed or anxious. When we check on our phones, right? we, we go to our phones. We, go, we, go to, we, we see reels, you know. And then you'll see a sexy version of that ting, ting, tang, tang, ting. <laughs> I mean, the first time I see it, it was like comedy. Now I'm seeing it. Oh, there's a lot of sexy version. <laughs> right? Lust of the eyes. So, this makes us 
occupy ourselves with the world. Right? But rather, what we should be doing in the morning is that we have to meditate on His Word so that we won't act according to our fleshly desire and so that we would also have a hopeful mindset. Right? Same thing at night. We have to meditate on His Word because our fleshly desire starts to creep back in us again. You know, um, in Tagalog, we call that, um, apan ba yun? Dinidemon na naman. <laughs> right? Because of course, I mean, throughout the day, I mean, you're gonna be stressed and all of that. I mean, we still live in a sinful world. So of course, it's gonna get into you. So in English, I believe you can translate that. Demonizing. <laughs> doesn't make sense. He's being demonized again. Does it? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. I need to work on my translation to Tagalog to English. He's being demonized again. Therefore, we have to be in God's word constantly to remind us how to act accordingly. And continuing with the verse of Joshua 1 verse 8, it says there that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Furthermore, in order for us to be transformed by Christ, we also need to be active in our prayer life. And it says there in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. When we need to pray constantly so that we would have a continued fellowship with God. You know, when we have a relationship with our friends or families, in order for us, for that bond to get stronger, we have to communicate, correct? Therefore, it is the same with Christ. Now that we have a relationship with Him, we also need to have a constant communication with Him through prayer. Also, it demonstrates our humble dependence upon God as we acknowledge that apart from Him, our, our own abilities and resources are limited. Therefore, we trust in Him in those areas in our lives. And when, I, I, when we were in a meeting, you know, when we went to a meeting, there was like, there was like this question that someone asked. So he asked that person. So, uh, I'm taking an exam. Yeah. Do you pray? Yeah. And the other person replied, I like this answer. No. Because I'm confident. <laughs> yeah. I, I like that answer, you know. Because if I am as smart as this dude and I'm as good looking as him, yeah. I mean, my, my, my prime is passing. I would, I would say the same thing, right? I'm confident. But then the other person said, oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, really? Something, oh, really? Yeah, something like that. I'm scared for you. So now the question that we can all ask is why would that person say, why? Oh, really? Why, why are you scared for me? All right? So if we're going to look at it superficially, there's nothing wrong with its answer. You know, he's just, a con he's just confident, right? But there is a danger. There's a danger that lies within our confidence. And this can be a warning for all of us, for all of us, especially when we are serving Christ. As we continue to serve and improve on the things that we are doing, we have this tendency to now rely on our own abilities forgetting about God, right? Then out of that pride, we become selfish. We become selfish, patting ourselves on the back, thinking that we accomplished that success on our own, pushing God aside. Now instead of doing it for His glory, we now do it for our own, which will lead us to our downfall. And it says there in Proverbs 29, verse 23, it says there, a man's pride will bring him low, but the humble in spirit will retain honor. That is why we need to remain faithful in our prayer, to be dependent on God for us to be transformed by Him. Now, as we stop conforming to the world and allow God to transform us, we will then begin to conform to the image of Christ which will lead us to our very last point. And it says there in 
Romans 8 verse 29, for those God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Now, in this verse, I believe that this is very rich, and there are a lot of things that can be expounded on in terms of theology. And for those of you I know who love studying the Bible or studying God's Word and doing deep exegesis, you know, probably you have more questions about this verse. But, so you can ask Pastor Don later. Yeah, you can ask him. But for me, for the purpose of this message, I'm going to... Just focus on conform. So for the other stuff, Pastor Ron, he can, he can answer those questions. All right? So God's purpose for us is to be partakers in His glory. Where we reflect in our lives the image of His Son, Jesus Christ. And as we are being transformed by Him internally, now it's going to be brought to an outward expression. Now when I was like thinking about this concept of conforming to Christ and how we can fully understand it because in the Bible, there are many instru instructions on that matter. But what I was like really looking for or what I want to convey is the underlying source of inspiration, how to conform to Christ. And eventually, I believe that this is what the Lord God wants us to understand. And let's look at these verses. It says here in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. If we are going to focus on the life of Jesus Christ while He was still on earth, He accomplished many things. His mission is connected to the supreme love of God and this means that his purpose and goals are motivated and centered around God's love. To summarize his ministry here on earth, these are the things that he did. He preached the kingdom of God and taught people how to enter it through repentance and faith. He was healing the sick and demonstrating miracles. He was teaching his followers about God's love and also discipling them. He was confronting hypocrisy to the point of persecution because of its wrong teachings. And he did all of this out of God's love, even to the point of giving his life on the cross for the sins of humanity. And in 1 John 3.16, it says there, By this we know love. Because He laid down His life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. And church, now do you see what the Lord God is trying to reveal to us? And in these two verses, the central theme that has been revealed to us is love. Right? And this is not the love our society defines for us, defines for us today. The love that Christ discusses is the unconditional love that God has for us. And His command is for us to also love others unconditionally. That is why in order for us to conform to Christ, we first need to love God. And it says there in Matthew 22, verse 37 to 38, it says there, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. It says there with all your heart, soul, and mind, which means down to our very core, we should love Christ. Loving God is the source on how we would be able to conform to Christ. If we truly love God, then we would be able to follow and obey his teachings, which includes to honor your leaders, to honor your pastors, to make disciples, to share the gospel, to forgive, to love your enemies, to serve them, to serve others. And all of these things, I know, these are hard to do. 
And love, loving your enemies, then not just love them, you serve them. Right? It's easy for us to tell them, oh, do you want to die? You go first. <laughs> those things, those negative, or if, if you don't really like that person, I mean, you know, oh, I, don't want him to, I don't want to see him in heaven. Those things. And that is why, you know, that is why we won't be able to do it out of our own love. Because it's going to fail. But through God's unconditional love for us, then we would also be able to love others. And now here in Lightcast, you know, we show the love of God to others by helping them. By helping them. And I believe some of you already know this and we call it leads. All right, leads. So L is for? Love. Love, where we engage with people to bless and serve them. E is what? Evangelize. Evangelize them by sharing the gospel for them to, for them to know Jesus. A is assimilate, where we welcome them as part of God's family. D is to disciple, where we help them to grow and teach them how to live their lives for Christ. And last is S, is send. Send them so that they too would be able to share their joy that they have found in Christ to others. So church, I believe as we are now in our weaning season, I hope that I believe some of us are praying for someone that we're planning to win for the Lord. And during this week, this is the time where we are supposed to reach out and bless them. All right. Therefore, church, let us continue to pray for their souls and prepare ourselves for the harvest. All right. And to cap this message, you know, Jesus, Jesus Christ reminds us that as Christians, we are called to be different from the world. And that is to be a salt that preserves and protects our world from decaying. Right? We must stop conforming to the pattern of this world in order for us to be effective ambassadors for Christ. We then allow Christ to transform and renew us, ultimately conforming us to his image. And as we do, we make a difference in the world around us, bringing glory to God and pointing others to Him. And that is the message for today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's pray. Um, for those, as all heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I know that for some of us, that we are still afraid, afraid to be out there to proclaim the good news, the gospel. But I know that Christ is going to work in our hearts and that all we need to do is to repent of our sins and boldly come to Him so that we won't conform to this world but be like salt to be able to protect to be able to positively influence others and point them to Christ so church let's pray Lord and Heavenly Father I'm sorry we're sorry Father God if we are Christians Father God who, who is afraid Lord to be out there proclaiming your gospel, Father God. So I pray, Lord God, for forgiveness, Lord. And for today, we ask, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit would empower us, Father God. That we would not be afraid, that we would be bold enough, Father God, to be out there to reaching the lost souls, Lord God, and making a positive influence or positive impact, Lord God, in, in this world. So once again, Lord, we just want to humbly come to you because there's always, there's victory, Father God, in your name. 
and that we cannot be afraid anymore, Lord God, because you are the one who is battling, who is fighting for us. And once again, Lord, we just want to magnify you. We just want to glorify your name. And we lift you up, O oh Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.